Imagine you're on a road trip with your family. The year is 1954 and you're black. Segregation is law in the South and basically practiced everywhere else in America. You're traveling down the famed Route 66 and you've just reached Albuquerque, New Mexico for the first time. There's not another town for miles and you want to pull over and sleep for the night. There are over a hundred motels to choose from, but less than eight will take you in. Picking the wrong one could lead to a humiliating encounter, or worse, a violent one. But there was actually a way to know where you'd be welcome. It was in the Green Book. Americans fell in love with the idea of the road trip in the mid 20th century. A growing middle class meant more people had cars and jobs with paid vacation time. And a newly built interstate highway system meant the country was accessible to a big part of the population for the first time. The open road indicated freedom, and traveling by car reflected Americans' image of themselves. Self-sufficient, curious, and spontaneous. It was a way for families to spend time together and see the expansive country they called home, to experience America's cultural and natural diversity. Through the 1950s and 60s, the highway became the most common way for American families to travel. Motels and roadside attractions sprang up along the highway to accommodate travelers needing a place to sleep or eat at any point on their journey. But that freedom didn't extend to all Americans. Black motorists were turned away from the roadside hotels, gas stations, and restaurants that had taken over the American landscape. Some places were so hostile that it was unsafe to even get out of the car. Sundown towns forcibly expelled African Americans at night, sometimes violently. Black families had to take prepared food in case they wouldn't find a restaurant that would serve them, extra gallons of gasoline in case filling stations wouldn't sell to them, and even empty coffee tins in case they couldn't access a bathroom. They carried blankets and pillows, knowing that finding a safe place to sleep could mean camping by the roadside or driving long hours into the night, even though they had money to pay for a hotel. Sometimes that distance was fatal. It was the exact opposite of the spontaneous American road trip. But thanks to a Harlem postal worker turned travel agent, knowing where to go wasn't a total shot in the dark. In 1936, Victor Hugo Green collected information on hotels, restaurants, beauty salons, and mechanic shops that would reliably serve African Americans in New York City. He called his travel guide the Negro Motorist Green Book and began publishing an updated version each year. Using his network at the United States Postal Service, which was one of the largest single employers of African Americans at the time, Green put together detailed information on businesses and private homes that would welcome black travelers. The Green Book eventually grew to cover locations in all 50 states and sold ad space to businesses all over the country. With the help of Esso, now ExxonMobil, as a progressive corporate partner and distributor of the guides, around 15,000 copies of the Green Book started selling each year. Victor Green's once 16-page booklet ballooned to over 100 pages and became a staple item for black families who wanted to participate in the joy of cross-country travel. And it turns out that iconic image of the open road, of freedom and family values, would become an anchor in the civil rights movement. Dr. Martin Luther King even mentions it in his I Have a Dream speech. We can never be satisfied as long as our body is heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and the hotels of the cities. The Civil Rights Act ended legal segregation in 1964. And just two years later, the Green Book went out of print. It had become obsolete. And as the road cut through the broad plains, you felt the tremendous space all around you. The country rolling out to the horizon, and you rolling with it. It was beautiful, and you sort of sensed the real meaning behind the word freedom. 